Okay, I've got the first time lapse set up. This is going to be a motion time lapse, and it's going to be day to night. Um, the A74 does that really well if you put it on uh, aperture priority. I've got it on aperture priority. I've got it on F2. I've focused to infinity, which you need to practice. If you don't know how to do that, you need to learn how to focus to infinity. And then I have a foreground that is more than uh, eight meters away, which should the hyperfocal distance should allow the foreground to be in relative focus as compared to the stars. It's not quite the blue hour yet, it's still the golden hour. And I have this camera pointed at where the Milky Way is right now. And then five hours from now, it's gonna be over this mountain peak. And so what it's gonna do is it's gonna start here and it's gonna slide and pan across that tire that you see on top of that old fence rail. And it's gonna be uh, at the peak of that mountain at midnight. So I'm gonna stay from here till midnight. So it's about seven o'clock. So that's, that's a five hour time lapse. And what I've done is I've set this up. Now, people don't believe this, but this is what you do. Um, I don't have this on move, shoot, move. I have this sliding and panning. From here, it's a double distance slider. So it'll be, it's it's seven 700 um, centimeters. So uh, like two and a half feet. It's gonna pan and it's slide and pan. And I put this on such a slow speed that I don't have to do take a picture, move a little, take a picture. That actually looks a little bit, sometimes it, it upsets the slide. I, I just don't like it. I learned this from Richard um, Tati. I'll link him down below. He knows a lot more about this than I'll ever know. But um, this will slowly move, and then I have the internal intervalometer set for a uh, picture every 20 seconds on aperture priority with ISO at auto with a maximum of 3200. And what's that gonna do is as it gets darker, it's gonna lower the shutter speed automatically. It's gonna lower the ISO, excuse me, raise the ISO automatically uh, until that the um, shutter speed is gonna be 13, it's usually 13 to 15 seconds, be 3200 ISO, and it will move uh, as the Milky Way slides. The other thing is, the reason I use this camera on this device is that it, it adjusts the, um, the exposure uh, on its own, and I don't have to worry about that. And also I put the 24 millimeter F2, this is a Sigma 24 millimeter F2 contemporary lens, and that is gonna allow the camera, um, uh, because it's, that 24 is a little bit narrow for Milky Way. And because it's 24, I want it panning across here. The other camera I'll put somewhere else and I'll have it. I'll have the Milky Way um, slide through it, and it'll it'll be one focal length. That's a 16 millimeter lens, and and that's just better for that. And then I'm going to have one more camera set up this way, going looking north, and um, that's going to be uh, on Polaris, so that I'll have a a uh, a time lapse with everything revolving around Polaris, and then star trails as well. So you get two time lapses out of this. So this is how I set up the first one. I always set up this one first, so I'm not putting up the slider in the dark. It takes about 10 minutes to set this slider up. Um, and so I do that first. I guess it's gonna take five hours to go ahead, to go two and a half feet. Um, the other two will be static time lapses, and I'm gonna have them with a different uh, field of view. I don't know if I'll put one up over here. Oh, here's another thing that you should know. I put this light, so, it, Another thing you need to do, I set it on electronic shutter so you don't wear out your your uh, your mechanical shutter. Uh, I set the white balance at 4,000. It doesn't really matter what you set the white balance out because you're filming in raw. But whatever it is, set it. Don't leave it on auto white balance. You put it on cloud, you put it on anything, don't leave it on auto white balance. You want to maintain the same white balance throughout. You can adjust that in post. And then what I do is I have this light and you won't believe this, but it's at 1%. I'll show you the back here. I set it up even when it's light because if you set it up later, it will change the light suddenly and it won't look natural. I set this at 1% at 4,000 Kelvin. So this is the same, the same uh, white balance as the A7 IV is, and that will give me some harmony in this shot. 
Um, like I say, if you don't set that the same white balance, uh, you can fix the that after post, but you can't change the color of the light after post. So you want to set this at white balance. The reason I have this shower cap over it is because even at 1%, it's too strong. It creates a beam because that camera is going to be going somewhere between 13 and 15 seconds. It's going to collect so much light that it'll beam across here. You want to put this about 45 degrees away. Maybe we should even put a little further, maybe even back here. You want to point it, and this is, by the way, a $10 tripod. You don't need a, a good tripod for this. If it gets windy, I can tie it down, but uh, this is the cheapest tripod you can get, whereas that one's a very um, stable, uh, sturdy tripod. So this will light up that foreground at 1% with a shower cap over the top of it. This is a Sony a7S. So this is a more than 10 year old camera. Uh, the battery in it is would only last about an hour. I want this one to go about three hours. And so what I put in is a dummy battery in here. And then I run this to a Sony NPF battery. This battery will run this camera for days. Um, and uh, right now it's off. So with this one, I wait till it's dark enough that I can see Polaris. Um, and then I turn it on and go ahead and start the internal envelometer. Um, this one often, this camera is so good at collecting light, I'm often at 1600, but I do the same thing. Uh, I'll put, I'll tell you what, at the end of this video, I'll put the, um, the, 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 the specs for each shot, uh, on the side of the time lapse, and we'll show you each time lapse at the end. Um, mm -hmm. let me show you quickly how I know that it's pointed at Polaris. Um, I'll do a screenshot in case this doesn't work very well on the camera. A screen record. Okay, you go into photo pills and you go to the pills and do spot stars and then go down here to augmented reality and Polaris is in the middle of the circle. I lay this on the back of the camera, exactly on the back of the camera and line up that cross uh, on the back of the camera. And then I know without even looking through the lens or take the lens cap off that that camera is pointing dead center at Polaris. All right, this is the third and final setup. This is an a7 III. So I, I bought the a7 III when I had enough stock sales, stock video sales. Uh, that's when I purchased the a7 III. And then uh, when the a7 IV came out, I bought it. I bought the a7S last when I, when I wanted a third camera, because if you're gonna come out here and spend five hours in the dark, you might as well get as many time lapses as you can. I'll get a minimum of um, five time lapses with these three cameras. And the reason that is because you can, you can use, uh, this is a 6K, I'm an exporter in 4K, so I could use keyframes to zoom in a little bit, still have plenty of pixels for 4K video, and, um, and, and show a little motion, then do one that's really wide and static. Uh, and then this, this last month when I got paid, I bought this new lens, this is Viltrox um, 1.8, 16 millimeter. So what I have is this setup, uh, I'm gonna set this one on manual. I'm going to go to the menu. Now, cloudy is okay, but I've got uh, this one set to 4,000 Kelvin. Um, let's check the composition. Uh, it's it's going to be way off. We're going to have to check it in uh, aperture priority, then I'll turn it back to manual. Okay, so that is the composition. I've got another small light set up over there that's gonna illuminate this old fence and this little ridge. Sometimes you have to put these cameras way down on the ground in order to get the foreground and the Milky Way. But in this case, because I have that mountain back there and I have there's cars driving by that mountain, so those cars may light up the mountain for me. And then this little light, same thing, 1% with a hairnet on it. That's gonna light up this old fence right here. And so that'll be, that'll be fine. Uh, let me put the cap back on. Oh, okay, so, so so here's how I've learned to focus this lens. You can see there's a little window up here. You don't have to have that, but I've got this set to 
manual focus. And you can see that it tells me how many meters away the focus is. And what I do, what I found by testing at home, it also says here on the back of the camera, and you can use this with uh, just about any lens. You just, you just keep rotating it slowly until you get to see that infinity. So it goes 15 meters, 30 meters, and then infinity. And right there, when it first touches infinity, stop. And I'll check it before I, before I um, start anything. Then we're going to go... Um, let me put the lens cap on. I just don't like that white burnt out look. Okay, so we're going to put the lens cap on. I'm going to go to manual. Uh, I'm going to leave it at 2.8. This can go down to 1.8. Um, but I found, I've only used it once, but I found that 2.8 is plenty. The, sh the stars are much sharper and the foreground, even if it's two meters away, is really in sharp focus. So I've just found that better than 1.8. But if I was in a place where there wasn't enough light to see the Milky Way very well, I'd go ahead. Or if I want to do a, sh a shorter shutter speed, but I'm going to I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put the shutter speed. I can put the shutter speed to 20 on this one because it's a 16 millimeter lens. It, it it's it, that might have a little star trail, but in a in a time lapse, that's not going to matter at all. Um, so I'm going to put it at 20. I'm going to I'm going to put the ISO is on auto, and I'm going to move that down to. 3200 and that I haven't checked it um, but that is going to be pretty darn close I can just turn it off now and wait till it gets dark what I'll do is I, I wait till twilight past the blue hour then I go ahead and turn it on I leave it manual I can do day to night with this one but it's it's when I do that with the a7 III it's best if I have an external intervalometer and I and I manually ramp up the the, the exposure I manually ramp the the shutter speed and the ISO at the same time. And that's that's just the best way to do it. Uh, this one, I'm just gonna wait till it's about twilight. I'm gonna turn it on, it'll be, it'll be blown out a little bit, but then the Milky Way will fade in. And I don't know, I, I'll need to check to see if I've got the composition right, but I believe it crosses right here in about a three hour time spread. And that will work out really well for this camera. That light will stay on all night at 1%, so I don't have to worry about that. Again, I put those on as soon as I come out so the lighting changes gradually. You don't have sudden a sudden burst of, of, of light. And that's just on a, a little um, $30 tripod. Sometimes those small tripods are really good even for these big cameras because sometimes you need to get really down low to get the foreground with the Milky Way in the, in the upper area. So same thing, set the white balance, set the shutter speed um, to 15 to 20, depending on your focal length and the amount of darkness you have. This one at 20 is gonna look great. If you wanna take a test shot when it's fully dark, what you do is look at the histogram. There should be a spike in the blacks and then a mound that goes halfway across the histogram. If that's what your histogram looks like, I guarantee you that's gonna be a sharp, nice Milky Way picture. Don't worry about the ISO. So many people running around worrying about my ISO is too high, it's gonna be, don't even worry about that. My goodness, get. Topaz denoise and the noon Lightroom uh, has a denoiser that is just fantastic. So if you're doing individual pictures, that's not going to matter. If you're doing like this, where I'm doing time lapses, and, and frankly, I'm doing both. I'll take some of these individual pictures, I'll sell them as stock photos. I'll take the time lapses and sell them as stock video. Um, I'll denoise the individual ones in Topaz. The other ones, I'll denoise a little bit in Lightroom, and then I'll put neat denoiser on it, and it will look fantastic, I guarantee it. But if you look at that histogram where it's got a spike and then a hump, the hump goes to the middle of the histogram. It does not have to go any further. You've, that is excellent exposure. My experience with this camera in these conditions is 15 to 20 seconds, 3200 is gonna be plenty. How do I know where the Milky Way is going to be? Again, let's do a screenshot. Okay, in this case, I'm going to use Sky Guide. You could use Photo Pills. My Photo Pills isn't calibrated. You need to do that when the sun's up or the moon. There's not going to be a moon tonight. That's one of the reasons we're out here. And so, uh, uh, I, I, I find sky, sky Guide, also I don't have a signal, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So what I do, you see this is set right up here, the time is tonight at 12.07, um, a little past midnight. 
and you can see where the Milky Way is going to be. It's going to be right at that ridge. Um, and if I, and then if I turn this time back to when it is now, it's about 7:30 now. Do it a little faster and hope I can catch it around 7:30. Okay, let's stop it there. Oh, I didn't stop it. That's close enough. So you can see where the Milky Way is now. It's going to, it's there. Uh, you can't see it because it's not dark enough. <coughs> but as it gets darker, so it goes all the way from basically due south or a little bit southeast maybe, all the way over to southwest behind this mountain here. Um, so with this camera, that's what I did was I started it here, pointing at the, where the Milky Way is, and then I ended up uh, uh, eyeballing it to w where that mountain is, and it should be right in the middle of the frame the whole time. And with this camera, I'll actually wait till the Milky Way comes up and I can see it. I'll check it on here just to make sure, but I'll put it in the far left of the, or maybe even out of the screen, and then I'll let it, the Milky Way, come through the scene through the t through, through the night, 16 millimeters, 100 and about 100 degrees. Let's say it's 100 degrees um, of a of a uh, angle of view. Uh, that's going to be three to four hours. So that that one sh we should get a very long um, uh, a very long uh, uh, time lapse. Mm -hmm.